What's up, y'all? Sparty here. Um, I have to reshoot this video because I want to... <laughs> Something's wrong with my V10's microphones and the video app for some reason. I don't know what's going on. But I'm going to just use my V20 despite its cracked screen and stuff like that to make this video. So, speaking of screens... I want to make a deeper dive video on LG's OLED versus Samsung's Super AMOLED. Now, this is something that in my previous video was more of a rant video. The video that I recorded did <laughs> literally just maybe like a few seconds ago. Not a few seconds ago, but... You know what I mean. Uh, now, for comparison, I'm not going to put these displays completely at their 100% brightness because since I'm not using manual mode, it's going to blow out the camera. <laughs> the displays will be blown out. Not blow out the camera, but the displays will be blown out. So just keep that in mind. I'm not about to do that. But as far as what... I want to talk about here. I want to talk about color shifting and I want to talk about brightness and specifically how certain issues on one device are worse on another device and screen calibration overall. Now, keep in mind, I'm not a super screen expert. I'm not someone that, you know, can look pixel by pixel and see which ones are fucked and which ones aren't. I'm not going to go into something like that, but what I'm going to go into here is how one display is not necessarily better than the other and which one I prefer overall, which if you guys have been, if you guys probably watched my live video on my LGB30 Q&A live video. You probably know already which one I like better. But let me go into some apps here that will show you guys on a clear white background, which is a lot of what a lot of apps tend to use. Like say if you are on Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that, a lot of apps tend to use that white background. Oh, oh, I didn't close it on here. Good. Now, from looking here, I'm not looking up at the camera where you guys can see my hands. I'm not. I'm looking like kind of down at them at a side level and i can see that the v30's display has more of a blue shift right here but that's not how you would typically use your display you wouldn't phone you wouldn't use it just sitting down on a table not looking directly over it like sorry i'm trying to make you wouldn't look at it like with like if you guys see my head like you would kind of look at it like that. So you wouldn't necessarily see a blue shift in your display when you're looking at the display straight on. When you're looking at it through an angle, sure. And what I could say about the Note 8's display is that it has more red issue from this side. So color shifting is an issue on OLED, period. It's not something that's just LG's display that has the issue. Samsung's has it as well. From here, you guys can probably see it as well. From what I can kind of see in the camera, you can see that the Note 8's kind of has this creamish color, and the V30 has a cooler color to it. And that has to do with screen calibrations and what they do. But from here on i can i can honestly say that the v30's blue tint doesn't bother me because honestly it's better on my eyes personally so it doesn't like strain my eyes as much as say the no days display does another thing is that looking at both of these displays at eye level 
I can see that they're pretty much equal as far as like how the screens look. If I if I were to like, you know, put the brightness all the way up if the God, Samsung's fingerprint sensor. Man. So shoddy. But if I were to put the brightness all the way up, you guys can pretty much see on both displays that they get blown out. No, oh, sorry. I had a pretty even. Oh. Wait a minute. That's weird. At a pretty even <laughs> rate. One's not worse than the other, really. But I can see more detail, honestly, through this camera anyway, on the V30s than I can on the Note 8s. And as you guys can see, the leather back there is actually how the leather on my dad's, like, you know, hand rest looked in his truck compared to it looks all gray right here. And that's not how it looked, really. But other than that, that's not something I'm going to talk about. From here, if you do like a little, you know, <laughs> if you do the little angle thing that everybody likes to do, you do get a blue tint. But as I said, it doesn't bother me. From here, you don't see it really as badly as you do in any other angle. <laughs> but it's not something that is a deal breaker, as I said for me. From here, you get it as well. It's not as, like, bad, but it's still there. From here, you obviously don't get it. And it's probably not going to be as easy to reproduce on a, using a phone camera. But if you guys can see it, there's this bit of... There's this bit of color shift right here at the edges. And I can see that straight on looking at the display. You guys can probably see it better because I'm tilting the dis the display, but I can see it straight on. So it's something that is there, period, for both phones. It's not something that's merely exclusive to LG's OLED. So just keep that in mind. Another thing I want to talk about... Oh, crap. Another thing I want to talk about is uh the always-on display. As you guys can probably see right here, it's not getting as bright for whatever reason on the V3. There we go. As you guys can see, they're pretty much as bright as one another right now. But since the Note 8 is closer to the window, it's probably getting it more light. But the V30s does indeed get brighter. And both, both AODs move around the display so you won't get burning. I think the one problem you'll probably have to worry about Samsung's is the fact that the all the always on touch capacity touch sensitive button is always there. I believe you can turn that off. Let me check real quick. I believe you could turn it off on the lock screen and still be able to access it. Let me look it up. Home button. Hard press home button. I have to look it up again. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can, but for some reason I can't find it. I'm pretty sure I found it when I first looked at the phone, but I'm not about to make this like a 50 minute video, 50 minute video trying to find that setting. Samsung really needs to get that back in order, their settings. They need to order those better. But as far as these two displays, in broad daylight, the V30s, I could see way more than I can the Note 8s. The Note 8s is like this very dim display. And you could, you could turn on brighter display on the always on display on here, but on here, you're pretty much stuck with whatever brightness it decides to go at. <laughs> Both have their, like, you know, toggles that you would want. You could add more on here. On here, it has its, like, you know, quick menus on here, like it did on the LG V10 and V20's ticker display. So it's kind of akin to what it does on 
those two phones. As far as, you know, the, you know, curved nature of both displays, I will say that I prefer LG's take on it because it's not this curve that's like ever encompassing that is so easy to like crack that and that you can't really put any screen protector on unless it's very expensive. So it's more of a flat edge. It's curved, but the overall footprint of the display is still flat. Whereas with the Note 8, as you guys can see, even with the case on it, let me turn flash on here. Even with the case on it, you guys can see that there's a curve and the case accommodates for that curve. <sighs> um, screen burning. Something that got happened on both displays. The S8 and S8 Plus had the issue early in the year with the nav buttons did burn in into the display. I personally don't have that issue on this or this because what both also do when you go into like when you go into certain apps pretty much every app is that they allow you to lock the either have the home the nav buttons there or like hide them so you don't have to worry about screen burning like that and they both work very, very well. They both do it. I like LG's implementation better because Samsung's, you got to double tap it to relock it and, <laughs> and, you know, hide them again. So that's something that, that's something that is very minor, but it's something that I guess is a convenience feature. I do prefer Samsung's hard press home button. Because it's easier to like, you know, get in and out of apps and have the, you know, home buttons, the nav bar not there. That's something that I do prefer. And that's something I wish more manufacturers would take into account. Uh, let's see. What else? Both displays get brighter when you put them in YouTube. Like, I've noticed that quite a bit. Where they tend to get, like, a smidgen brighter when you open either YouTube or Netflix. It's more easier to notice on, like, the Note. Probably because I have a darker background on it, but... When I put the Note on it, it does it. When I exit it, it gets out of that. And... Both displays are very great in that regard as to color reproduction in certain apps. But as far as natural tones, this is better. As far as oversaturated, this is better. But in my personal opinion, I prefer natural colors. So I'm always going to go with the V30s display. I tend to, when I'm at work and I work overnights, I use my Note 8 to listen to my podcast, and I use my V30 for pretty much everything else, as well as, like, corded audio if I want to listen to music during my breaks or something. It tends to be more easier on my eyes, especially since it's probably, like, 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning and I'm tired as shit. I'd rather use a display that's cooler than use a display that's more, like, warmer and reddish. So that's something that is not a knock to me on the V30. It's something I prefer. So I will go towards the V30's display over the Note 8's when it comes to like what I do day to day. And another thing is what you do, what you do day to day is not put screens at its their lowest brightness settings and put a gray image on it that's something that pisses me off about all these re reviews and all these people so oh it looks blotchy oh all this both displays i haven't been able to truly test it but i've noticed that in certain parts of my display the note 8 specifically on the top and bottom there it's a bit brighter and on here, it's kind of like it's more uniform. But when it comes down to like brightness, both get super bright, both get super dim. But the Note 8's display gets a smidgen dip, dip, 
dimmer. <laughs> so just keep that in mind if that's something you care about. Um, as far as what I, as far as my display, what I prefer, I think I just prefer the V30s overall. I think Samsung dropped the ball as far as this 18 by 9, 18.5 by 9 infinity display goes. As far as a usability thing, it's something that I don't like because it gets false touches when I try to reach across the screen as it just did there. It just, it just not work nearly as well as what having a flat display is. And I'm glad LG just didn't, oh, we're just going to curve it to do it. They didn't do that. And that's what I like. But... Both displays are great. They're very good displays, and you can't go wrong with both. If one has some issues, I guarantee you that another has those issues and more, you know, either way. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these two phones. Um, as far as this goes, it's pretty much it. Uh, this is Sparta. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the support. This ended up being as long as my last video. Christ. But, yeah. I hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday morning, evening, afternoon, night, whatever time of day it is in your area. Have a good have a good one. And let me know what you guys feel about this. A lot of this has been like Pixel 2 XL woes and people just blaming LG for that. Like... Google put a polarizer on those displays, on the XL2 displays, so that's why it has an even more intense blue shift than, say, the V30s, because the V30s isn't that bad. It probably looks worse in video than it does in real life, but it's not as bad as a lot of these reviewers are trying to say, and I feel that... <sighs> When time goes on, LG, these displays will get better. They've already produced two phones with these displays. So come the G7 and V40, that'll be the third and fourth, right? So just keep that in mind. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's something to say, oh, it's nothing. It is, especially if you have all those worse issues. But... When you take into account that these are, this is pretty much a first generation of, you know, LG OLED displays that are new. Because these are 18 by 9. Both of these phones are 18 by 9. So these are pretty much first generation in their kind of aspect ratio. So there's going to be issues regardless. So just keep that in mind. And OLED overall just has issues no matter which side you pick. So, yeah. Have a good one, you guys. Let me know what you guys think. If you have a Pixel 2 XL, let me know if those issues have been plaguing you, if you've had the issues and you've returned it because of that. But yeah, have a good one.